you see that? You see that little area there with the green 3.5 millimeter port? That's the onboard sound card to this old Dell. And what that onboard sound card is, is inside is a DAC and an amp, a headphone amp. Now the DAC's job is to take ones and zeros, ones and zeros, and that's all you've got on computers, ones and zeros, and turn it into a beautiful waveform that looks like this, that you could send out and amplify and headphones or speakers use it. So the quality of that DAC, how, how it looks at those points, because all you have is points in samples, and it says, okay, here's what the waveform looks like. Well, the better the DAC, the better, the smoother, the more detail you can get out of that waveform, the better things sound. Now that sound card there, this one particularly, is shit. Now, many, many moons ago, I replaced it with this, the Behringer UCA202, and it's the exact same thing as the sound card. This is a sound card, essentially. It's just a two-channel, left and right outputting, even has a headphone amp built in right here with a volume knob. So you plug it in, and up on Windows, it comes up and says, okay, this is your sound card now. And you plug in your amp or your, your headphone amplifier if you have a separate one like this, and that's it. You're done. You've replaced your sound card with $30, and however much you want to spend, here's a $100 headphone amp. Or you could use the built-in one, which is not that great. But, okay, bad, way better. Now, moving out of the beginner stuff like this, and although the... Uh, the Magni here is their cheapest unit. It is still very good. But let's say you wanted to spend a decent amount of money. Let's say you're looking at one of the better Zonar cards. Or you're looking at uh, Shitstack, which would be the Modi DAC, which is $100 compared to $30 compared to free and garbage. So you'd have a headphone amplifier attached to that, and that's it. You plug it in, same deal. Windows comes up, you use that. Now, what are your options for... $250 plus, like that area. Well, you can get an O2 headphone amp and an ODAC. You can get the shit stack for $210 roughly. There's a couple iBasso things. You can get the FIO setup with the uh, the dock. I think it's the uh, E17 and the dock. So all those are around the $200 range. But when I needed one, this is what I had. I needed something, I need features. I needed the ability to, I love it to have a built, a lot of DACs sometimes have a built-in headphone amplifier, which is nice, or you could add your own, but either way, I needed it to have RCA outputs and a headphone amplifier. So, the motive is last sale ever of all time was this January, and I picked up their reference DAC, the XDA2, and this is their newest revision, the XDA1 existed, and uh, it was... It got down to as low as $160 before they stopped making it and then introduced this. So this got down to as low as $250 when I picked it up. So for $250, this is a digital reference DAC, which means it's very good, unless they're just using the word reference for fun, and right there, an eighth inch headphone output. And they claim that that headphone output is extremely good. And they give you the specs, they give everything. It'll power, I think it's a watt half a watt one watt one watt of output it's a lot it's more than a little but now let's think about this if i got the odac and an o2 or a shit stack with a magnium modi or anything else it's going to have no features it's going to plug in and be done this is a full digital preamp which means i get to plug in usb optical one optical coaxial one coaxial two or an aes ebu uh xlr connector and i get rca outs and xlr outs and it's got 5 and 12 volt triggers, and oh my god, what the features this thing has are incredible. Let's plug it in. Let's plug this thing in. I'm going to hook it up to this computer. This is an XP machine, by the way, so it was a little bit more interesting. Uh, this doesn't just plug in and work. This actually has drivers you have to install. Pretty big, actually. It's like 80 megs, the driver package for this, which is odd but it does do 192 kilohertz which is a lot something that a lot of the other ones i was just mentioning don't do and that's not really important but it's a nice number to show off with so plug in this device can perform faster i don't think it actually can it's probably just because i hooked it up i'm going to turn said unit on click click tell me what it is 0 dB, and it's going to tell me 48 kilohertz, which is the default. 
I can't change the output of Windows XP because it's Windows XP and it should really be 7. I did hook this up to my Windows 7 uh, Ultrabook and that worked amazingly. Now, so let's go over features. It's a preamp, which means I get to actually sit here and click, I want to listen to that source. So I want to listen to this source, or this source, or this source. I can pick up the remote control and change what source I want to listen to. It has full digital volume control, and usually digital volume control is crap. And I'll go a little bit into that. Anything that has a pot like this, like an actual twisting volume control, um, there's physical context, it's a physical rotational resistance is being changed and it's really hard to get that perfect like when you turn it maybe the left even my e10 my fio e10 has headphone imbalance issues at very low volume and the uh, answer to that is usually leave everything up full which is dumb this i didn't hear it as much but a very low when you're just turning it on the left channel definitely comes on before the right and somewhere around there you're not going to notice it anyway but this has a step ladder resistor volume, which means somewhere in here, if I opened it up, there would be an ungodly number of resistors all tied together. And when you change the volume on it, it would switch which resistors it's using for left or right channel, which means it'll be perfect every time, which means I could set this to zero and it'll output the same volume all the time. Or if I put this on and I turn it to like there, it's just like there. So for headphone reviews, this is going to be amazing because I'm going to be able to set it exactly to a point. And it'll always be there. And it has a remote. Did I mention it has a remote? It's got a remote. It's got a remote made of machined aluminum. All right. The whole thing is, is I could kill you with it. Two hundred and fifty dollars. This is worth that alone. Hearing those buttons. Uh, this SRC bypass button. I had to do a little research on that. Uh, this, even though it's. It can imp it'll take an input and it'll tell you when I'm running FUBAR. If FUBAR runs this first time, it's weird on XP. It should give me a playback error, of course. Yeah, as it has an at came with an ASIO plugin for the device. Did I have to restart it last time? I think I may have to restart the computer last time. Well, we'll get this working in a second. You. Are. All right, we're start. This button, this SRC bypass button, whatever you're sending into this, whether it's 44, 48, 88, 92, or 192, having this on automatically up converts whatever you're sending it to 192 before sending it to the to the DAC before converting it to analog. And you could bypass it with this, and that'll mean if it's 44, 1. It'll take that and send it straight to the deck. And it, there is a sound change, and you can go to the Emotiva forums, the Emotiva lounge forums, and just watch people argue about, oh, this is adds more air to the space. And I play with it. You can hit it on and off while it's playing. Click, click. And whether I like one more than the other is, uh, I, I can't, I can't tell. So I just leave it on all the time. But that's what that function is. You got the full step letter volume. Um, It'll go to negative 100 dB all the way to positive 10. Now, zero is where you want to keep it. Zero means that's it. L the line on my receiver comes up peaking at zero, and this is at zero, and that's at zero. Everything's at zero. And it has one quarter decibel increments of volume, which means there are 440 steps of volume on this. So I can go from negative 100 to negative 99 and three quarter. 99 and a half, 99 and a quarter, 99, 98 and three quarter. Ridiculous amount of volume. You can't. It, it, I have a list of things, of demands, that I'm going to go over as soon as this thing is working eventually. Please be working. She's working. That I'm going to go over for the XDA3. Because I know there's going to be an XDA3 and I know it's going to come out before the end of 2014. Plugging in the RCAs that go to my. Pioneer receiver, previously used on the uh, Behringer amp. So right now I've got power, which by the way, one of the nicest feeling power cords I've ever used. Super supple. Although, uh, one of the demands I have for you, Emotive, if you're re watching this, don't fold the damn cord over like this. 
that's really annoying if you can get the manufacturer i know you're not making these but the manufacturer if they could just sort of spool them into like a 10 inch round please so i can just go ah oh. and they'll just be straight cords instead of these ridiculous kinked pieces that you got to work out for 300 years uh 13 watts by the way maximum is what i've seen on this for uh power usage so it's super efficient um, here we go. We're playing now. What are we saying on the front? 44.1. Now, if I put on something 24-bit, <sighs> 96. She'll automatically tell you what she's doing. Now, that 96 is being upconverted to 192 to be put through the DAC and sent out here. Let me see if I can get you a good example of why this, in general, this is a great song by the way, in general, if you have a USB DAC, the problem with that is, is it's USB powered, which is 5 volt, and what's supposed to come out of RCA, there is a voltage that is supposed to come out for the left and the right channel, in order to be, you know, 0 dB and all these things, top of the line, you know, that's it, it should be 2 and a quarter volts. And it's hard to get two and a quarter volts out at peak from two channels because that would that would require four and a half volts worth of the five you're getting to be used as signal amplification. So USB DACs really can't do it. There's one or two that claim they do it, but this since you're plugging it into the wall can output through the RCA full voltage and beyond. So if I go to something loud, something that's going to peak the peak the absolute hell out of it to a thousand. Hundred dollar bill from Great Gatsby, yeah, that's, that's definitely going to hit the top. I gotta lower this. I don't know if you can see those meters. You see how they're stopped at the very top? Never in the two and a half years I was using this Behringer DAC have those lit up no matter how loud this ever got because they just couldn't push the voltage to the to the amp which means no matter how loud the song was it was always a little bit under full which means I had to put this up a little bit more and because you have to put your amp up more because your signal's too quiet that's like whispering into a megaphone a little bit it's like get out of that building and it has to you have to turn it up really high and it distorts a little bit now that this is hitting peak and it is set to zero well quarter higher yeah, now that it's set to zero and that will peak, my my previous like listenable volume was between six and seven on this analog dial, and now it's between four and five. Money. What the hell we now? No I mean, that's We're just like that's the biggest improvement I think with this DAC so far, is that I'm not even with the um the only other uh, DAC that I have in the room here is back here is the little Fio. Uh, the hell one is this e09 no ed3 it's a d3 and that gets powered so that can handle it although it's only usb power i think yeah it's only usb power it's back to the same same shit block as that they could have used a nine volt and done it fine but it's back to a usb adapter on the power so it, it that couldn't power this my behringer behringer had to go up but never i mean this has a, a different weird thing where it clips from your volume knobs but this, the fact that it's now like 15% louder going to the amp, means the amp has to do less. You can run the amp cooler and quieter. And it just kicks ass. But as far as clarity goes, there was a step from that onboard to this that was unbelievable. And I've been pimping these out like no one's business for the last two years. I don't check my Reddit history. And... I still, if you have an onboard or a laptop, you get one of these, or you get a FIA, or you get a uh, a music stream, or you get, you know, something in there. You have to get something other than your onboard. If you have a good sound card, a decent sound card, you know, if you spent the money on it already, don't bother. You probably won't notice a difference. But if you're going for full, retarded, this, while they still have them, they're off sale, they're about 280 270 270 I think. Let me just, uh, so now here's what I can do with this. I can lower this volume, which complaint number two 
other than the cord not being wrapped up. So yeah. Wow, that hardly lowered it. So I can now control the volume of the output. So I don't have to touch my amp. My amp could stay there, which is at 6. And if I put this up, eventually, any day now, it'll get louder. And I could mute it. Alright. Yeah. The volume control in this is so god awfully slow. God awfully slow. I gotta make a whole list of demands at the end of this video. Still talking about how good this is first. Good is first thing. Now I don't have anything to test the other inputs, the other digital inputs. I'd have to do some hackery with plugging in the Behringer again and then using the optical just to check it. I believe they're going to work. You're going to click it over, it's going to work fine. Um, wow. So the difference between that and this, when I got it, is now the difference between this and this. There you go. I was amazed. I was amazed at the difference. And I'm, I believe a good part of that is the fact that it's a powered DAC that I can output full voltage to the amp. And everything else you get with it, because it's about the same price as a shit stack or any other things, is all extra. So, pull up a chair. Let's pull up a chair. And we'll uh, unmute this. Shut up the lights. Pausing that. You got five dim. It's also huge. You haven't noticed. It's, it's very huge. It's very huge because everything in Motiva sells. The amps, the processors, obviously the DACs. They're all the exact same dimensions. Width and length. The depth changes. But So you can put this in the bottom of your stack, top of your stack. You're not going to mess it up. And it will eventually go into my little stack over there. Probably underneath the Behringer amp. And I'll just run the wires to the back. But for now, on the desk, headphone out. We're going to test in a second. On uh, on pause. Mute. I'm going to give you a. Uh, put up the full. Actually, I'm going to change the volume now so you can see exactly what kind of what I'm talking about as far as why I don't like it. This goes to negative 100 at this speed. It's useless. If someone came in the room and started talking to you and you needed to lower it to the point where that you could hear them, it would take 15 seconds. I don't even want to kill the batteries in the remote. i got to hold on the button here. I'm at 50. Let's, let's time this. Do I have a thing to time things? Actually, I can time it. Let's see. I'll start this song back from the beginning. And we'll time how long it takes to go from 50 to 0, and then I'll know how long it takes to go the full gamut. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Come out, Virginia. Don't it's gonna get real loud. Six, five, four, me. three, two, Soon one, zero. Comes down. Twenty-two seconds. So that means to go down to a hundred is forty-four seconds, and to go from negative a hundred to positive ten is like forty-eight seconds. That's ridiculous. So, a mode of a wish number one, make it so that this is an exponential volume. So, you know, have it go slow and then faster. Or, or, anything below 50 decibels, which is really, really low, just have that go really fast. And get slower as you approach zero, because this is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous amount of time to hold the volume button down. You're killing my remote batteries. Which, by the way... You have to take out with four screws to remove the panel off this aluminum. Which sounds like fun, but it uh, probably isn't. Alright, let's plug in a pair of headphones. It works amazing for an RCA output. Now let's power something. And here's here's what are my, uh, my brain waves. I'll leave them off for now. I've got them all uh, mountain climber tied up. Now the fact that this is not a quarter inch jack bothers the hell out of me. It's an eighth inch jack. Click. She switches to a different volume setting for a headphone. She's at negative 15, which is correct, is where I want it. And there's a reason that, oh, you won't hear a difference between quarter inch and eighth inch. Agreed. I agree 100%. But I recently destroyed the eighth inch, three and a half millimeter on the back of my Fio, plugging this in. I had one of the, uh, 
the bulky adapters that just goes on RCAs, plugged into the back of my thing under my desk, and this sort of slipped sideways and went cut. And I was like, oh God! And then just, so my, my Fio still works, but I can no longer use the line on the back because you have to, you, it's like twisting a fork into some sort of dead animal in the back of it. It's atrocious. So, for the sake of longevity and solid solidarity, please, for the love of God, make that a quarter inch in the next one. I'll use the adapter. I'll use it just fine. And the reason they don't want you to use an adapter is because what do you do most of the time? You leave your adapter plugged in. At least I do. I, I can leave it plugged in this. And I can leave it plugged in my Pioneer because I could shut off A and B. It'll output to headphones and speakers. And this, when you plug in a headphone, disables the output to the head, to the amp. If I'm playing... Nothing. Headphone. Alright. Wish number... I don't know. I lost count of wishes. I got lots of wishes for the XDA3. Give me a quarter inch headphone jack and put a button above it. Just like any of the other buttons that I can go click and choose if I want to listen to my headphones or the speakers. Click manually. This way I can leave everything plugged in Okay, I've taken off my headphones. That was a good session. Click. Speakers are not playing. Of course, this automatic crap means I have to constantly get up and unplug and plug and unplug and plug and unplug and plug and break. Things break. If I could just plug that in with a quarter inch so I know if I yank it, it's not going to destroy itself because it's got a little more bulk. And just go click. Just, just, just click. Make make this. All right, now I want to hear speakers and now I want to hear headphones. Um, that's, that's another wish. So, faster volume, it's got to be faster volume, headphone port with a manual switch, headphone quarter inch port with a manual switch. I love these headphones. Yeah, negative 10 on this amp, and the amp will go to a positive 10, I'm yelling right now. Negative 10 on the headphone amp section, because again, it's two different volumes, is as loud as I'd ever play these. Ever. So it'll go to zero and then positive 10, which will break whatever headphones I have here. I don't have any, I have those Panasonic's, I don't mind blowing those up, but I'm not going to. Alright, Billy Joel, hold on Billy Joel. So, my list of demands so far. We went over a bunch of them. Uh, blue. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the blue craze. I know it's sort of your thing now. You could always just put a, a white one in there occasionally. And, oh, another thing I was really pissed off. There's no line in. There needs to be a... I like two sets of RCA outs. Because now I'm going to have the problem of... I either have to use a splitter to go and power both these amps... Well, that's what I got to do. That's what I have to do now. Unless I want to use a separate sound card for the Behringer, which is going to be a pain in the butt to switch in FUBAR and everything else. I use the Behringer for the uh, Behringer, which makes sense. But other than having an XLR and a balanced, a, an unbalanced, two balanced, and an XLR, be, you know, it's not going to cost you anything. It costs you a dollar. But I'm really pissed off that this does not include an analog input. So much so. So I can't bring my little portable player here and use this as a headphone amp for that unless the portable player has a digital output. So I'd love to have just three and a half millimeter into my thing. Ignore the entire DAC section. Just amplify this. Just amplify this, please. Click. Amplify this. And it doesn't have that. So this is a completely digital uh, processor. No analog at all. Except for the output. Which sort of really pisses me off. But, uh... You know, I'm talking about a feature that, for $270, you're not going to find on most things. I mean, at least this. Like, here's the headphone. Here's the bag of headphones. If I just took this out and plugged it into my little player, it'll amplify that because the DAC section is separate. Can't get between the DAC and headphone amplifier section of this. It's all one piece. So, since I can't choose... How to destroy angels. So here. Put it back up. So it's an amazing sounding headphone amp. Someone said to me that they read uh, 
uh, a poor review about it. I haven't seen it. And since it does the step ladder resistor for volume, zero difference in the left and right, which is an amazing obsessive compulsive problem of mine that I've had with the feel. I'm like, be the same, you bastard. And with this one, even at the very, very beginning, when you could tell, it's just like, it's analog volume control. So this is a digital volume control that runs through a literal, a literally analog stack, probably this long of resistors. That's amazing to me. It's an amazing feature that more things need. Uh, so what are the buttons you got in front? Mute, volume, dim. There's five levels of dim in case you want to be real anal about it. Two is fine. The standby buttons here are in black. And they have to actually say in the manual that it's black and you can't see it. Now it's off. Did that freeze that? It did freeze that. Is that how that works? Hope I just have to play another song. Because I just freaked out FUBAR. Oh, God. Windows XP is bad, ladies and gentlemen. And if I didn't find that computer in the garbage, I would reinstall it. But I'm pretty sure it will not be able to handle uh, Windows XP. Anything higher than Windows XP. Uh... Okay, good. It just required a restart of the program, not a whole, not the whole damn computer. Touching peak. Ah! Oh, it's releasing animals that were in this amp that weren't out before. And I could really hear it on these giant speakers. I could hear it. Hear the violence. So, Tech Syndicate's full of crap. Put that in there. Because I watched their... They did that two-parter. And the first part it was good. It was like, you know, you want to buy a USB DAC. You want to buy a sound card. You really need them. And then the second parter came up and said flack is bullshit and it's three percent better flack is three percent better than the best quality mp3 and maybe you can't tell three percent but mp3 was invented in 1998 is when the format was like here you go everybody here's mp3 great and nothing has changed since 1998 it's 2014 hard drives are 200 percent bigger 200 times bigger not percent times bigger processor internet speeds we don't need a four meg file for songs anymore. If I could download a Family Guy episode that's 350 megs for a single standard definition Family Guy episode, then I should be able to download the best album in the world and be the same size as that TV episode that's standard definition you're not gonna watch for 350 megs. So just think about that. Just stop using MP3, right? I don't care if you can't tell the difference. There's no point in keeping around broken shit. Great. We needed it for like when I had a cell phone that had like a four meg card in it. It was great. I, iPods have like 120 gigs now, and you really need more than 5,000 songs. Really, more than 5,000 songs. You're obsessive. Go home and change your music out. That's my little rant on that. So I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It's my second emotive purchase. My first one was those uh, 6.1 speakers, which are in the box back there, and I love them to death. And now this, this has got to get placed right here. And i got to start doing my headphone reviews for serious. As soon as I find silicone glue that glues to wood. Look at this black, it's just a black square. I'm reviewing a black square for you guys. And I have not plugged the headphone amp into the line outs to try it. Because then I'll be able to directly compare headphone, headphone amplification. Which I'm pretty sure this is going to be... You know, it may not be... This gets pretty damn loud at full, but I was able to put it up and not worry about my headphones exploding. Putting this up to full with the transformer it's got in it. If you look up the web, on the website, link in the description, this has a little Toriel transformer that really is not... should not be required for this, but it is there. And it'll probably kill you. So yeah, that's my list of demands. Please don't wrap the power cord up like you currently do and everyone does. Just give me a loop. Be professional about this. You got such a nice cord, little hand grips and everything. Uh, give me an analog line in. Give me a second unbalanced RCA out. Make the headphone jack a quarter inch so it's got a little bit 
more robustness to it. Give me a manual switch over so I don't have to keep unplugging and plugging my goddamn headphones in. Make the volume control faster for the love of God. Let me just lower the song. Um, let me just lower the song. Oh, up, oh, up. Oh, okay. It's now lower than it was. Oh, I'm gonna put it back up. Ugh. Phone. Alright, on that phone call, I'm done with this review. If I think of anything else, I'll put it in the description later.